In this video, we're going to look at the different ways that you can test the input parameters of our methods. And by doing so, it will also allow you to think about how robust your methods are to handling various values and situations that they might face from their input parameters. So if we take a look at the class that we'll be testing, it's called calculator. And it just has a single method called square integer. That method takes in an integer called i and then it simply returns i multiplied by i as an integer for itself. So it's quite a simple method, it just does one simple task, and you might want to think about to what extent are we actually going to be testing this method? For example, we know that if we pass in the value of three, we would get the value of nine out from it. The same goes for, say, the value of 10, we would expect it to be returning 100. But where do we draw the line in terms of testing this method thoroughly enough and going too far. So I'm going to move into our test class and this is where we're going to begin discussing the different kind of groups of values that we can test to ensure that our method is robust. So there are three different groups of data that we can pass in to our method and the first is called the expected values and this is typically like a happy path for our method. So these are the values that we probably expect our calculator to receive and as I mentioned earlier, values such as 3 and 10 would be the happy path where we expect the values of 9 and 100 to be returned. So I'm going to write the test method for our happy path and that will satisfy the first group of values which we want to test for. So I've instantiated a calculator instance. I've passed in the values of 3 and 10 into two different assertions using the square integer method and I've said that we expect the values of 9 and 100 to be returned. So our test has passed for the values that we expect the calculator to receive and that satisfies our tests for the expected values of our calculator. So the second group of values which we'd like to test for are known as boundary values. And these are values that typically can push our method towards the illegal argument exception boundary. And these are kind of values that you, you don't really expect your method to be able to handle, but it's kind of the upper and lower end of what we would be passing in, which we can expect. So I've called this method up squared integer upper boundary. And you might be interested to know that the highest value an integer can have within Java is limited because an integer within Java has a 32-bit size capacity. So I'm just going to print out what the highest value is for an integer just so we can see it. So you can see that the integer dot max value property will return 214748364 to the console and that is the highest value which we can actually achieve with the integer within Java. So this is actually a boundary that we have for our own method and what we would want to do is make sure that our method handles this value correctly. So let's have a look at what would be returned if we were to multiply this value by itself. So if we square the value of integer.max value by itself, we actually receive the value of one. And that's because when you add one to the integer.max value, it goes all the way round back to the integer.min value, which is that same 2487 value, but uh, negative. So what we want to do is change our method slightly to handle this value and perhaps to throw a runtime exception if the value that we're passing in is a little bit too high. So I'm going to move into the calculator class and I'm going to create a new method which will verify the argument that we're passing in. So I'm going to do i equals verify squared argument. And then I'm going to create that method below. And if we were to square root the integer.max value, we would get 46340. So really what we want to do is make sure that our value is less than 46340 and higher than negative 46340. Otherwise we can just throw an illegal argument exception and that will handle 
the boundaries of our calculator square integer method. So now if I were to pass in a value that is higher than 46340 or less than negative 46340, we would expect a runtime exception to be thrown from our method because the boundaries of the integer value within Java, which is limited to 32 bits, simply will not be performing the calculation as we expect it to. So one of the benefits from testing the boundaries of our parameters is that we actually learn a little bit more about how Java works. If you hadn't considered the boundary of the parameter being passed into this method, you might not have realized that the integer value within Java is actually limited to a certain height or a certain depth. We can then repeat this method for the min value. And I can also replace these values with, with values that are greater than or less than 46340. And that covers the second group of data called the boundary set that we would like to use for testing our method. So the final group of values that we'd like to test for are known as strange values. And these strange values are ones that we wouldn't immediately begin to think about for what our method might be receiving. So for example, if we're expecting positive values, it could be testing for negative values. And the same is vice versa. So if we're expecting negative values, it could be testing for positive values. We would also want to test for a null value being passed in or an empty value if it's an optional. If we're expecting different kinds of uh, data structures, such as sorted ones, we might want to be passing in unsorted collections. If we're reading in files or we're using different kind of files, we might want to pass in uh, kind of broken files or files that uh, can't be opened or don't contain all the information we expect. So for our calculator square integer method, we might consider the strange values to be negative values, uh, a null value, or also a value that doesn't actually exist, such as the not a number value, which we can get by square rooting a negative number, for example. So the first strange value I'm going to test for will be the null value. So I'm just going to write the test out now. So I'd like the square integer method to handle the null value by returning the value of zero. So if I run the test, we can see that it's failing because we have a null pointer exception and that comes from the line 10. So you can see that null pointer is arising here. So what I'm going to do is change the verify squared argument uh, method to handle that null pointer and to return zero if the argument is null. So you can see that the test is passing. The second kind of strange value we might want to test for could be a negative value. So if I pass in the value of negative five, we would expect it to return 25 to us. And the square integer method already will handle the negative values because when you square a negative value, it still returns that positive value. And lastly, the final strange value I'd like to test for is not a number. So we can see not a number by system out so the square root of any kind of negative number. So I'll do math.square root, and then I can pass in negative 5. So we can see not a number is print to the console. And what I would like is for the calculator.square integer method to throw an exception if not a number is passed in.
and to make sure that the runtime exception is thrown I just need to update the verify method within the calculator so we're going to be checking that i is equal to the double not a number so now we verified that the runtime exception is thrown for not a number and that summarizes the different kind of strange values that I would like to test for the square integer method. So your first thought might be, you know, this is quite a lot of testing methods to write just for a single class method. And if you do this for all of your methods, you're going to have tons of test methods written, most of which probably won't really be necessary. So testing for these arguments can help us to design the method to be more reusable. Having said this, not all classes are really designed to be reused by other classes and in all these other contexts. So it's very important for you to consider the context of how your class or the method that's being tested is actually going to be used. So if you had a weighing scale, you wouldn't really want to be testing for integer max value because that weighing scale would never really be used for that purposes. If, on the other hand, you do have a, have a method that is going to be used by other classes, by other contexts within your application, then it is a good idea to consider uh, these three different data sets, the expected values, the boundary values, and also the strange values. So that's just something to bear in mind when it comes to writing your test methods.